Dr. Tristan Smith, welcome. You're an associate professor at UCL Energy Institute and you're a leading expert in low carbon shipping. Are you personally hopeful for the future? I'm very hopeful. Uh, it's, not, it's not difficult. There are a lot of advantages that will come which are not just about decarbonising ships but reducing noise, reducing air pollution emissions and um, scaling and enabling many countries to have a green transition. And that's a key opportunity that lots of countries will need anyway. They want the hydrogen market to appear and shipping is the obvious hydrogen market for many countries that have futures uh, that are very rosy in that production of that commodity. And what does the perfect supply chain look like? Full electrification of the supply chain. The, the task that we have is to decouple from fossil and to move to renewable electricity sourced energy, which then needs to be at every point both in the raw production of a commodity and the transport of that commodity and its storage. And all of those steps require energy. The truck that carries uh, the materials into the plant will all need to be moved away from fossil fuels and, and electricity is, is the scalable way to do that. There might be interim steps taken with biomass derived energy commodities, but those we know cannot achieve the volumes and scales that we need for the to, for the scale of energy use we have across global sectors today. And how can they drive the decarbonisation agenda? So when ships are alongside in ports, they've got the opportunity to connect to electricity directly from the port and use something called cold ironing. And that will require uh, some modification to the infrastructure that we have and the ports, as well as some change to the systems that are on board vessels. And many vessels are using that today because it's a relatively practical and easy step to take. So technology is seen as the answer. What exciting technologies are out there? So the, the fuel that we will need to use is a hydrogen derived fuel and that's produced using an electrolyzer, just splitting water into its hydrogen atoms and then combining that perhaps with nitrogen to make ammonia, which is a, then a much easier version of hydrogen to store on board the ship and to store on land and to handle on board the vessel. In any transition, early adopters or first movers who who do take some quite progressive decisions even before the policy landscape has fully clarified um, and, the, and the kind of incentive structure that we, we might expect has been developed. The rate at which that's happening is not fast enough, um, but it will increase. I'm confident it will increase over this decade. And uh, as a consequence, I, I think we have an eminently solvable um, decarbonisation challenge and, and one that we can be quite positive about. Society has solved much bigger problems than a conversion of an energy supply chain from one commodity to another, which is primarily what we're talking about here. You know, getting people to land on the moon, getting people to launch extraordinary technologies in um, sectors around the world is something that we've got lots of experience in. What we need is the, is the government commitment to drive it at the speed it needs to happen, and then investment and capital will fall into place. Dr. Tristan Smith, thank you very much.